Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video today. Today, we ended up packing the best possible card that we could have gotten from the Premier League Team of the Season SBC, guys. Absolutely insane, okay? I, I didn't expect that. You see the flag, you already know what's going to happen, boys. So, that's going to be exciting. But we're going to have some gameplay running in the background. We're going to be talking about a few different things. And one thing that I want to talk about right now is this communication that EA just gives us nowadays. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how everybody kept on talking about the Premier League SBC and how we needed repeatable SBCs? They actually did that to the game. So following feedback from the community, this is from the official EA Sports FIFA website, they said, following the feedback from the community, repeatable SBCs, quote-unquote, uh, not quote-unquote, uh, open bracket, close bracket, Premier League upgrade, and Premier League Upgrade, Premium Premier League Upgrade, are now available. So the thing that people kept on asking for, for repeatable Premier League SBCs, they've actually introduced to the game. So that's going to be really cool. If you guys don't already follow these guys on Twitter, you guys got to hit them up for sure. It's EA Corey SA and, uh, and the new community manager uh, that we got recently, which I'm going to get his name for you guys right now, is... do 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 I can't believe I forgot his name. He's a new community manager um, for EA Sports FIFA. So he is uh, EA underscore G Zaro. These guys have been just feeding us with information nowadays. And they've been transferring the information that we've been giving them and what we want in the game towards the, uh, the dudes who are working on the game. And by the way, guys, there's something that I do want to mention. In regards to the gameplay, I have done all that I can do. Uh, in regards to it, the guys who work at EA, like Tyler and stuff, I've already sent them the information in regards to gameplay. I've showed them specific clips of when it changes and when it doesn't. So it'll be completely down to them uh, as to whether or not the gameplay situation has ever changed, right? So hopefully uh, they do the research into that and fix that because right now, menu wise, this game is unbelievable. There are so many things to do in this game now because of all these SBCs. But obviously, gameplay content wise, when the World Cup comes out, it'll probably be a little bit significantly better. But SBCs wise, they've definitely uh, listened to the community and they've done a fantastic job of it. So full props to them. I always give props where it's, it's needed. The, all the menu stuff that they added for FIFA is fantastic nowadays because we never used to have this type of stuff before. And it's awesome because it benefits the player and it also benefits the company. And that's the kind of balance that you always need in your game. But I'm still waiting for that World Cup game mode. Anyways, next topic of uh, situations going on here. We're going to see uh, if anything else has been tweeted at or, or tweeted about in general. Uh, and it doesn't look like there has been. There hasn't been anything crazy. Uh, seeing all the mentions on Team of the Season Upgrade SPCs, everyone don't have an answer for you today, but the team is aware of the feedback. So whenever we talk about menu stuff, they go they listen now. They, they, they understand what direction the game is going to head towards. So really cool to see that they've done all this SPC stuff. But... Um, yeah, it's really awesome to see, but I, I, I need to play that World Cup game mode. We need to talk about that World Cup game mode for a second, guys, because uh, people have always are asking, um, you know, it, why I haven't been really trying out the players I've been packing, because this pack opening that I got for this video today was insane, and why I haven't tried him out. The reason why I haven't tried him out is because I really want to save my coins as much as I possibly can for the World Cup game mode. I don't want to buy a team to be able to try out players because I want to save as much money as possible to play the World Cup. Now, the reason why I'm doing the SBCs right now in regards to the Bundesliga and the Premier League ones, if they give you the Team of the Season ones, is because it's a video uh, It's a video idea for each video. So I had a video idea yesterday. I have a video idea today that's going to do really well because I already know that that pack pull is absolutely insane. Literally the best player you could have possibly gotten. Um... It's just incredible, man. And to be fair, if if their gameplay game modes in Ultimate Team in general were better, then I would be more interested in trying out the players because I don't have an incentive to play Division 1 with the Team of the Season Sun unless it's to try out the player. But I trying out players has become a little bit meh with me right now. The gameplay content being better is what's going to bring this game to the next level because all the menu stuff is absolutely amazing. But Division 1 is incredibly boring. Foot drafts, the rewards are incredibly inconsistent, but the gameplay aspect of it is fun because you're always using different teams and different formations. And then foot champs is just 
it's just foot champs, right? So that's why I can't wait for the World Cup because the World Cup concept is beautiful, right? So with the World Cup concept, they keep it the same exact way as it was in FIFA 14. There's a beautiful balance there with being able to play a game Every game you play, you're collecting coins. As you're collecting coins, you're saving up to be able to buy um, these World Cup players that you might be able to get um, in future uh, in your in your future squads. It's really cool because in FIFA 14, if you won the World Cup, you got 30k and two World Cup packs. If you open that those 30 30k coins from World Cup packs, you would actually get a total of six World Cup packs, which was beautiful, right? So that you can have a really good balance of having fun. And playing for a purpose, right? Because there's no, there's gonna have a, they're gonna have a system with duplicate cards where if you do end up getting a duplicate, they're gonna have a system with that. So, in terms of listening to the community, they've done a fantastic job, and they're definitely improving. And they're, they're, to be honest, they're actually at a point where they're becoming better than other companies as a whole. And I think the big reason for this is because of how well Fortnite's been doing, listening to their community, taking the feedback, and going from there. Because that's what brings your games to the next level. Not just this sell and grab, sell and grab type deal, right? With Fortnite, they listen to their community, stuff is added, and they improve the game, right? With, with FIFA, they're starting to do that, and that's what's going to bring the game to the next level companies like Bungie, even Activision and stuff, they haven't really been doing that much recently. Uh, so it's amazing to see that they've actually been doing all that. But we are going to go ahead on the FIFA forums to see some general discussions that people have been talking about to see uh, what's been going on recently with the community. So I'm going to go ahead into the general discussion of Ultimate Team and we are going to see a few things here. So um, let's see what we got here. Uh, what is the point of Team of the Season Fernandinho? This is actually an interesting one. I was quite excited to pack him in the EPL SBC. That excitement didn't last long. I find him absolutely hopeless. I play 4-3-1-2, uh, and I have tried him out of left center mid and center center mid. Uh, the biggest mistake? You're already using him as a left center mid. And as a center center mid, he plays better as a CDM. So that's a big thing right there. In defensive situation, he stands miles off the other players because he's a center mid. Um, when you take control of him, his tackles are, are uh, powder puff. In attack, he doesn't get involved at all. The only good thing I could say is his passing is decent. I'm 10 games in with him and find OTW Toliso is far better player. Does anyone end up having ideas that they get the best out of him? Um, yeah, dude, in regards to that, it's because you're using him as a center mid. You don't want to use Fernandinho as a center mid because that guy is an aggressive defending type of midfielder. So you need to put him in the CDM spot. A center mid, if you ever play with a 4-1-2-1-2, right? and you have a left center mid and a right center mid, you will always notice that they're not in the right positions, right? And not, not in the right positions. They'll be in those positions, but they'll be farther up the pitch instead of being more defensively on the pitch, right? Like, they won't be far back to defend properly. Fernandinho will be in those positions. I know this because I've used Fernandinho in, uh, in foot drafts, and he's a fantastic CDM, especially when he's next to Conte. Like... <gasps> Excuse me, they just bounce off each other really nicely because Fernandinho just has absolutely amazing stats. But playing him as a center mid is not an ideal thing to do because that center mid in a 4-3-1-2 does not play the same exact way as a 4-1-2-1-2. That's a reason why both of the formations have a CDM and don't have a CDM because the movement on the pitch is very important. Also, you have to check out the instructions and tactics that you have in regards to why your team of the season, uh, Fernandinho, might not play well as well. But tactics and instructions is a big one too, man. Like, you have to put cut passing lanes and stay back while attacking on his card for you to really utilize him um, to his max potential. Uh, I traded in team of the season Courtois and got team of the season Pope. Uh, rest in peace, man. I, I have a clip on Twitter that I posted the other day of, of how terrible that Pope card is. It's actually awful. I think EA's got to look into that card because it lets in the most disgusting goals. For someone who's a team of the season card with the leg save trait, very, 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 very weird to see for sure. Um, I just see like a bunch of Pope threads. Everyone hates this guy. Poor thing, man. Um, you guys also tired of Park the Bus Plus Counterattack? Dude, everybody, mostly everyone plays that way nowadays. They play like this super defensive way because defensive AI is very overpowered. So it's just like being patient and just passing the ball a lot uh, to find the space from time to time, dude. Uh, Prime Yashin worth the buy? Absolutely not. I don't think any goalkeeper that isn't Begovic, De Gea, well, De Gea the most, but Begovic, De Gea, Farman, even Ter Stegen are worth getting because 
it's I think with a prime Yashin, if I search up his card stats right now, I know for a fact that he's going to be so expensive. A, a prime Yashin. I mean, like, dude, let's be real right now. The reason why you'd get the prime Yashin is because of that hat. We all want that hat, right? But even still, uh, his card has good stats in general. Like, his, he looks like a fantastic card, but it's because he doesn't have the leg save trait that doesn't make him as good as uh, most players in the game. So that's the only unfortunate thing about him uh, and most goalies in the game. Uh, but I don't know. Every time I've come up against Yashin, he hasn't really been an annoyance to me. Like, uh, sometimes I've came up, come, uh, came up against him in the foot drafts, and he hasn't really done anything crazy to keep people in the game. It's always De Gea. Every time I'm playing against someone and I'd save after save after save, it is always David De Gea. That guy is just a freaking monster in the, on the pitch. Um, how did Matic make it into the team of the season? Um, how did Vertonghen make it into team of the season? How did Courtois make it? Matic is in. Just deal with it. Matic United bias. He was actually important for Mourinho's play to make his second in the league, not because he deserves it 100%. We can't come up with another CDM who deserves it more, to be honest. Uh, name me a CDM other than Fernandinho has done a better job this year. Bakayoko. Lol. Uh, Bakayoko will improve. It's his first year, so I actually don't mind that at all. But uh, I, I kind of find it weird that People think that team of the season Matic shouldn't be a thing because Matic is an incredible, incredibly important player in Man United squad. Obviously, I think he did better when he first got there, but it was because he was more of a standout performer. But as a midfielder, he has been playing really well and he's been playing his role very, very well. So I think that he deserves it because I think when you take Matic out of Manchester United, it's a, like a completely different team. Like other players can't play with as much freedom when he's not on the pitch, in my opinion. So I think if Mourinho can find a balance of being able to put uh, Pogba, Matic, and have them on top form on the, on the pitch at the same time, it would be great, right? Because Matic is that CDM holding player that can, you know, stay back while Pogba can do whatever he wants. But it's, it's definitely an interesting situation. But I think that he deserves it because I think he's uh, an integral part to uh, Man United's team for sure. Um... Let's see what else we got here. Do, 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 Thoughts on this 10 mil end team squad. So he has prime... Wait, 10 million? Not bad, actually. 10 million coins for this team is really good. Uh, prime Ronaldo, uh, team of the season, Aguero as a cam. Uh, Hungman's son as a striker. Very good starting lineup up top. Uh, Milinkovic Savic, not ideal for me personally. Uh, but a lot of people like him. Matic, center mid. Uh, play a 4 1 2 and 2 for sure, so you can get that uh, better chemistry going on there. Um, Hullet as your right center mid, or the second last version of Hullet as your second, as your uh, right center mid, which is very good. Uh, Prime Maldini is an absolute god. Baby Ferdinand is a little bit weird for me, but he's like okay, but it, he's the type of player that it really depends on who's around him for him to be used to his full potential. Uh, OTW Kyle Walker, quite nice card as well. And Alexandro, so. Yeah, not too bad. I would probably not use Team of the Season Matic because I think Team of the Season Matic would actually cost quite a bit, I would say. I would say he's like, maybe maybe he's like 300k, I would say. Let me see. So Matic's card, Team of the Season, is 289k. You know, it's not that bad. I think if you're looking for a player who's very, very defensive-oriented, that can track back really well, that can intercept the ball really well, so on and so forth, he'll do an okay job at that. But maybe I wouldn't use the team of the season Matic in the team. I would probably use somebody else, uh, in my opinion, to kind of like make that a little bit um, a little bit balanced, just a tad bit so that the team could be really good, in my opinion. I've seen a few questions from people uh, in regards to how I would put Lukaku in a team, I actually have a video of my team of the season meta squad that I made recently that would actually fit Lukaku in the team nicely. So you can put like uh, Batshuayi, Mertens, Nangolin. Um, your CDM could be Allen. Uh, maybe you might be able to put a Hamzik here, a back four that's a Calcio A squad. There's definitely a lot you could do with it because uh, Lukaku's nationality and his league definitely helps in regards to what type of players you can put in each position. So I think uh, in regards to his claw, his card, I would probably use him as a left striker if you switch formations in game. But I think that would be the most ideal thing to do, um, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Davies, a, uh, Davies team of the season. I think people are going to be winning that team of the season card mostly to just trade towards... Uh, the SBC to see who they actually get um, 
in the uh, in their team, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We see uh, Prime Desai, what a disaster. Prime Desai, what a disaster. All these types of cards is very, like, opinionated, right? Like, some people will like these cards, some people won't. In regards to Prime Desai, his agility and balance it can be the only thing that presents to be a problem because he is medium high in work rates, which is nice. He is 84 jumping with six foot height, which is also nice. So the only thing that can really affect you in regards to him being a poor center back is his balance and agility, which isn't even that bad considering that he is 82 acceleration with 83 sprint speed, but definitely worth trying out for sure because 59 agility and 56 balance isn't terrible, but that's the reason why you may not like the card in all fairness. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Team of the season, Aspiliqueta. On a scale of 1 to 10, how good of a pull is Aspiliqueta from the EPL Team of the Season SBC? Um, from a scale from 1 to 10, I would probably give him maybe a 7. No, 7 is, a, seven is really low. 7 is like a Vertonghen. I would say like an 8.5. 8.5, because if you actually look at his card... As Philly Quetta's Team of the Season card has beautiful pace, beautiful agility and balance. So that's the thing that's gorgeous about the card, right? But it's just the height that makes it an 8.5. Because height is always important, no matter what. Even if you have 95 jumping, height will still be an important thing. But having 87 jumping with 84 strength, as well as 510 height, isn't terrible. It's definitely still very decent to have. So, um, yeah, he's a cool card, man. Moving left and right with him is going to be incredibly smooth. So he's going to be a lot of fun to use. Um, if that's what you're focusing on with your uh, FIFA squads. But that is going to conclude most of the forum discussions and questions that we had uh, from the YouTube video. I hope you guys do enjoy this pack opening. It is an amazing one. If you guys do enjoy the video by the end of it, please drop a thumbs up on the video. It definitely helps out the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys later. Peace. I'm going to freeze for a second here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Put a one in the chat if you think I'm going to get something good, or a two in the chat if you think I'm going to get something really bad. I mean, to be honest, there's only like three of them that are bad, so if I actually get one of those, I, that's really unlucky. I think I'm going to get something good, man. My pack luck is really good, chat. My um, pack luck is actually pretty solid. Knock on wood. <laughs> Yo, Midnight, I don't know if you're in the chat, dude, but if you are, thank you so much for the sub off stream, man. Appreciate that. All right, you boys ready? Nose pack. Come on, baby, let's go. Don't be English, don't be English. Or if it's English, you know. Oh, no! <laughs> no way! No, chat! No, I told you guys that my pack luck is crazy! My back luck is crazy, dude. Oh my god. My pack looks crazy, dude. I told you guys, bro. No freaking way. Uh, on the PlayStation account? You know how sick that is? Fam. Fam. What the hell, dude? Let's get it, baby. First day back in so goddamn long, and I get freaking sunned. Let's go, baby. I don't even stream. If you guys didn't watch the Premier League Team of the Season review of all the players, I didn't even have to look at this card because I already knew it was gotcha. I was like, if they fixed his balance, that's it. It's over. Oh my god, dude. No freaking way, man. Do you know how perfect this card is? It has all the right traits and it has all the right stats to make him a god. Disgusting, man. That's disgusting. My next video is gonna be a banger, boys. Oh, man. Next video is going to be a banger. This one's okay, but this one? Whoo, Sonaldo, baby. Just hear it out. Hear it out, boys. 
Damn, man, this card looks so sexual, man. Oh. Nah, dude. Look, there's nothing wrong with him. Look at him. Chad, there's nothing wrong with this card. Look at this thing, it's so beautiful. Oof. Oh my god. Chat, 96 acceleration, 95 sprint speed with 90 agility, 88 balance. So he's going to move like a god on the ball. 94 finishing with a 5-star weak foot, 89 composure while having 79 strength. He can jump in the air with 83 jumping while being 6 foot tall. High, high work rates. You can play him as a cam, center mid, striker. Fam, isn't this card like super expensive on the, on the market? Like, Jesus Christ. Do you know? Do you guys know how god tier it is to have 94 finishing, 89 composure with a 5 star weak foot and 94 shot power? Dude, you know what makes this card really good chat? He has the finesse shot trait. So there's, he has the finesse shot trait and I'm pretty sure that he has the long shot trait too. Let me actually check. I'm gonna search it up right now. Hungman Sun's team of the season, traits. Yeah, dude, he has the finesse shot trait, he has the long shot trait, and he has dribbler and speed dribbler. That's it. This card's got tier. There's literally nothing wrong with this card. There's nothing wrong. Everything's perfect. For an attacker? Left mid? Oh, dude, as a left mid. Oh my god, as a left mid. Dude, I got a really sick pack today on my Xbox account, but this? This is on another level. Oh my god. This is basically the perfect left mid, eh? As a left mid, 4 2 3 1. Woo! High, high work rates. Oh my god, this card is so beautiful, man. Look at this thing, chat. Let's just gaze in the, in the glory of it. Get in my belly.